This is Dave. Dave provides a product that gives relief and pleasure. It's called illegal drugs. Dave's a bit unpopular with the authorities. In fact, they have declared him the ultimate form of eversy. War. This is Rick. Rick also provides a product that gives relief and pleasure. It's called prescription drugs. We call him a pharmacist. Now we support Rick's product. It's promoted and protected for a great cause, making us all healthy. Joining this industry as a creator, supplier or retailer will make you sleep in these houses among fellow respected citizens. One substance industry, at war with them. Other substance industry, love them. So these two industries must be totally different, right? Meet Paxil, an antidepressant released on the market in the late 90s by pharmaceutical giant GlaxoSmithKline. Millions of sad people got this drug prescribed, many teens and children. The product turned out to be a goldmine for GlaxoSmithKline and sales were sky high. People helped, company happy. Well, not really. GlaxoSmithKline knew one little secret about this magic pill. It didn't work on teens and children. GlaxoSmithKline sat on these tests for years. A leaked GSK memo states, it would be commercially unacceptable to include a statement that efficiency had not been demonstrated. They were fined a record $3 billion for supplying and specifically targeting young children. But what's that worth when sales of the drug have now reached over 12 billion and counting? So Dave the drugs dealer is an evil guy. But what does pharma want? They use a lot of ads spend billions on marketing, claiming they can help you feel better. Their sleeping pills, their antidepressants and painkillers are in no way addictive, they say. They just help you when you need them. But millions of people experience a different thing. They struggle with side effects or tapering off. Not weird, because this is the part of the brain cocaine stimulates. This is the part of the brain an HDD drug works on. Lifelong use is no exception anymore. Effect of prescription drugs diminishes over time. Addiction is what's left. And more. Depressed people are more than six times likely to become suicidal while actually taking antidepressants. People like Joe Mazzella, who was using an antidepressant for years without ever seeing his doctor once. When after years he even started to feel worse, his doctor gave him an extra doses, again by telephone. A few weeks later, Joe was found dead. Suicide. Experts declared in a lawsuit that this was purely because of the antidepressants. Prescription painkillers kill more Americans than heroin and cocaine combined. Every day 44 Americans die of overdoses prescription drugs. That's over 16,000 deaths per year. Besides pharmaceutical drugs doing massive self-harm to users, they can do something else. Hurt other innocent people. When users get aggressive, like Dylan Storm Roof, the Charleston shooter who killed nine people earlier this week in a mass shooting. When he was arrested, he was wearing orange strips, which Roof claimed to be Suboxone. Suboxone is a drug that is linked with abrupt aggressive behavior. Many people describe how their husbands and fathers suddenly became very aggressive just after starting to take the medicine. But Roof is certainly not the first mass shooter who was on pharma's drugs. In fact, most of major shootings have something in common. The 1999 attack at Columbine High School opened a new chapter in America's modern history of mass murder. 13 people shot to death, two dozen wounded by two high school boys. The media linked the shooting to violent video games. Buried beneath the Washington Post headlines, Eric Harris's treatment with the antidepressant Lumox. 14 years later, claims of a link between antidepressants and violence have grown louder, if not really clearer. Almost all the school shooters that we know of have either been on or are using these drugs are in withdrawal from them. And pharma? Are health companies just profit and profit? Is this okay? Why do we call this healthcare and not legal drugs business? Now our generation is the most connected, freest, but also the most crazy generation ever to walk on earth. We are completely bazooki. This are all psychiatric diseases in 1952, this in 1980, and this today. More mental disorders than ever. Are you sad over a loss and you grieve for more than two weeks? 
And you think that's just plain old grief? No. According to DSM-5, the psychiatric bible, that's major depressive disorder. You need this pill. Been eating a bit much? Well, that's not because there's great tasting food around, no. You surely have binge eating disorder. You need this pill. Normal human conditions are being pharmatized fast and furious. Over 17 million Americans are now on mind-altering prescribed drugs. Every year, 230 million prescriptions for antidepressants are filled by doctors. Now how did this rise of mental illness happen? Diagnose is treatment, is pills, is profit. More diagnose, more profit. These people, the American Psychiatric Association, actually decide what is diagnosed as a mental illness. They write the Diagnostic Statistic Manual, you know, the ever-growing one. Of course, it's a coincidence and in no way related, 69% of them having ties to the pharmaceutical industry. And let's not forget, you know how many biological tests exist for criteria sets for DSM-5? Zero. So we basically still barely know how mental disorders work or even how the brain functions. Shouldn't that make us super cautious to give millions of us drugs that actually change your mind? At the promise of making us healthy, what we are becoming is a junkie society. Prescription junkies. Because look at the trend of illegal drugs in the last decade. Notice a difference? Now it's made pretty hard for our doctors not to join this industry. Because pharma sales teams heavily work on them, with tickets to concerts, exotic holidays and money. Some doctors receive bonuses of over $100,000 and higher since 2009. Only Pfizer has already financial ties with over 150,000 doctors. They get to live better if you take Prozac. Now as parents, we warn our kids, stay away from the bad guys on the street. Yet we seem to buy into farmer's way of raising a child. Does he or she make careless mistakes or has difficulty waiting its turn? Ooh, that might be attention deficit disorder. You should visit the medic. From that moment, clever marketing will make you feel that you are actually helping your child by giving it medicines. Like this cartoon by Pharmaceutical Shire, using superheroes on medication who have great focus. A new customer is created for a medicine like Adderall, a methamphetamine. Even the name is powerful marketing, as its creator and former school teacher, Griggs, envisioned. All for HDD. HDD for all. Adderall. Filling the schools with medicated kids might be their ultimate fantasy. Around 15% of teenage boys are now diagnosed with HDD. To make it all worse, new studies show that HDD medicines like Adderall and Ritalin actually make you worse at learning on the long term. We got used to the doctor prescribing this. But in some countries, you get arrested with these medicines. The Japanese, for instance, say no person shall import methamphetamine, amphetamine, including their pharmaceutical forms. Take Adderall into Japan? and you go to jail. Japan doesn't see a difference between the product of Dave and the product of Rick. Are they very wrong here? Is there a difference? I guess we just pretend there is. Now we fight a continuous war to prevent people taking illegal mind-altering drugs for pleasure or sorrow. Yet yeah, we use society's most respected people to hand out legal mind-altering drugs. You're made to believe that is patent-based, billion-dollar-making pharma giants are interested in your health. But it's more and more becoming a lethal profit machine. The doctor as dealer, pharma as the supplier. Keep it real. Subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one.